everyone. John Day here with a, another SharePoint One and another Power Apps because I am trying to spread the word, get everyone on board and start using the new tools within SharePoint Online. So if you are one of those who's been using, for example, the lookup column for bringing up data from another list, I'm going to show you a better way of getting around the old SharePoint on-premises, the old legacy SharePoint lookups, and using a much, much better method. Yes, it means Power Apps, but that's what Power Apps is for. If you are someone that's been using InfoPath for many, many years, Power Apps is the way forward. Uh, don't forget, InfoPath is going to be retired with SharePoint Designer by the end of 2026. So we want to get you to embrace the, the, the better ways of doing it. So if you've been using lookups in InfoPath or if you've been doing using lookups using the column lookups in SharePoint, Power Apps is the way I'm going to take you through this. So it's a very simple goal. goal. Let me just take you through the background of what I'm about to build. So the way I've got it set up at the moment is I've got a list of courses sitting in one of my sites. OK, and uh, the site that I'm inside, just to show you this, is the Microsoft Office user support environment. And this is inside my Teams managed path. So it's in it's in one top site, um, totally away from everything else. And this is providing just a list of courses that I want to provide to our staff. And these are like one hour, three hour long sort of courses. And I put in all the topics and all the information. But what I need is the subject, whether it's a OneDrive course or a PowerPoint course or a Teams course. And those are subject matters. Now, I could go in and create uh, these and type them in. But the idea is I want it to be a list of subjects that are pre-built and provide additional information. So rather than typing it in, I want to grab that data from an another location. I've already got that data stored in a totally different site collection. So not just another site, another site collection. It's even using a totally different managed path. It's in a sites one. Now, in the old days, if I go back to my courses list, uh, you would do this by adding a column, going into uh, the more option. This took you to the sort of legacy uh, list or library settings and then launched you into the create column path. And then you'd put in the name you want, let's call this subject two, and then you'd use the lookup information already on this site. And that's the, that's the expression again, it's only stuff that's already on this site as a list or library. Now what that allowed me to do is go and grab data such as I can go and grab the documents library and put all the data in from documents. The only problem is I wouldn't be able to grab the file name. It's it's an intrinsic field. In fact, it's not even really metadata. It's kind of borrowed. But it's, it's, it's data that is not available to me through this method. And in the same respect, if I was going into another list, I wouldn't be able to pull in certain particular um, intrinsic columns. So some are available. There's created. There's title. But, but not all are there. So I, I get a lot of fields that I want that are hidden away. So in summary, with these SharePoint lookups, not only am I restricted to connecting to a list or library, it must be in the same site. I can't even connect to any other type of data source other than a list or library. I can't pull in key data from certain columns. So I can't pull in. And the other thing is I can grab the data but I can't manipulate it, I can't change it, I can't allow a user to add their own choices that can then be stored back into that list. And I can't create cascade dropdowns, in other words, manipulate the data to actually filter another dropdown to provide specific data. With Power Apps lookups, I can do all this and an awful lot more. And it doesn't take that long to build. And I'm gonna show you uh, how to step-by-step -step create a lookup using Power Apps. And even if you've never used Power Apps before, I'm going to take you through the key areas of the screen where you can build this. So I'm inside my courses list, ready to build my form and provide that drop down list box. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and click the new button to create a new form. And it's just my nice shortcut way of doing this. So inside the form, there's an edit form drop down arrow at the top there, and I'm going to click customize with Power Apps. Now, this is your first time in Power Apps. It will take a little while for this loading screen to build all the um, tools it needs into your browser first before it then builds and provides the form itself. And then you're ready to go. So up it comes. I'm just going to skip this uh, opening screen. And here you can see I've got um, my form that came from my courses list sitting on the screen here. 
and again i've still got just a regular text box but before i go into the form and customize it let's do this in a nice clean step-by-step -step process the first thing to do is go and get that data source and put it in connect it to power apps so from the left hand side i'm going to um, select this little cylinder here which is your data sources give that a click and as you can see I've currently got just the courses list which is where my form is pointing and I'm going to go to the connectors drop down box at the bottom here and you see I've got a whole load of data connectors that I can click to and point to their services and pull data from any of their sources so that includes SharePoint if you're doing this for an Excel you can pull in data from an Excel list you have to put that Excel workbook into your OneDrive at the moment then you go to OneDrive for business if it's Office 365's OneDrive and then you'd point to that file click it and then select the data table it has to be a data table in Excel for it to work and then once you've done that you can connect and work with it pretty much as I'm gonna do right now so everything after I connect to the SharePoint will be the same so I'm going to click this SharePoint data connector for my purposes. Ignore my services here. I'm, I'm going to assume you can go on any of these. This is because I've been plugging and plugging and plugging out to loads of stuff in the past. So I'm going to click add a connection. It just adds my credentials to the data connection. And I then got a choice. Do I want to connect directly? In other words, do I want to connect to something in Office 365? Or do I want to connect to a source that is inside another SharePoint server? Uh, and those servers are usually 2013, 2016, or 2019 uh, data servers. So I'm going to actually going to point to my Office 365, connect it directly to cloud services, go to the bottom, click connect, and the next thing it's going to ask me for is the location of the list of library, or you know the site in this case. Now I've got a load of sites I've been working with. I'm going to assume you won't see any of them, so I'm going to go back to the site where the subjects list is, I'm going to right click on the site icon where I can then copy the link or copy link address. Depending on the browser, the wording would be slightly different. That just gives me a quick clean link to the site. So I'm going to go back to Power Apps and click inside that end of the SharePoint URL. I can paste it in, um, click connect. And now that it's connected to the site, look, it's given me a list of all the libraries and lists that I have in that site. There's my subjects, click the subjects, click connect. That's it, it's done. So I've now got my courses one already, and now I've added the subjects list, which is going to provide the data from the subject title. Um, and it's gonna pull it into this particular column. So the next thing I need to do is turn that subject text box into a drop down list. Now to do that, I'm going to go back to the left hand side and you're going to see me click on those little tiles there and that's called a tree view and that's where it shows me a collapsible and expandable list of all the objects that I have in there so if I collapse these up and if you do the same thing it's a good way of learning is to break it down so you're starting with your form screen so you should only have really one screen but in case you've got many a screen is like a page where you can put buttons and pictures bells and whistles and of course data uh, fields and things so this will already provide one and inside that would be a SharePoint form and a form is like a plug and play ready to go connection to the data source where all your text boxes and all your sort of controls are and these are the ones in particular. So when I click on that SharePoint form that is actually that entire form all the way around my form screen right there. Okay so just to prove that I'm going to click on my share form I'm just going to show you that I can actually just make that form smaller. I could put a heading at the top. You could go crazy by adding or inserting all kinds of um, icons and shapes and things. It's quite cool. So I'm going to put that form back. Uh, so again, a nice quick way of undoing something. As we know, Control Z is a useful undo shortcut. There we go. So let's put that form back to where it was. Now, if I look inside there, the next layer I've got are cards, and the cards in a form are the objects that connect to all of my SharePoint columns. So I've got the title column, the duration column, the role, the subject, and I've also got the attachments, which normally I'll turn off, but I'm going to completely ignore it. So if I click on the subject one visually here, that just ties in for me, or just lets me know that that one is pointing to that subject data card on the left hand side and that's the one I want to work with so what do I want to work with in here I want to work with the card 
And then later, I'm going to be working with the data card value inside it. So all the cards have got sort of similar objects. You have a star visible, and that's a little label that pops up with an asterisk to tell you if the field you're looking at is mandatory or not in SharePoint. That is an error message for your column validation and various other validations. So if an error pops up, if you do anything wrong within that data, it comes up with an error. You've got the data card value, which is the control I want to point to my value in my column. And of course, the data card key. The data card key is the label. It's like that column name that appears above your control there. So first thing I'll do is go to the data card so that I can then change that control type. So data card. To do that, I need to bring up the fields list. Now that can be done from the right hand side and you could click on any data card to do this. But on the right hand side, on the properties tab there, there is a field option and it should say edit. If I click edit, it then brings up a list of all the fields. I want to expand the subject, which is currently showing this sort of text box where I can edit the data. I'm going to click on the drop down arrow here and choose allowed values. I've now turned that into a drop down list box if you like. So I'm going to collapse that field, I don't need it anymore, keep it nice and simple. And now that I've done that, I'm going to click directly onto the card again. Again, you can click it from here or you can click it here to make sure you're picking the data card because in order for me to manipulate anything in that card, I have to unlock it. So I go to the right hand side and this time instead of the properties tab where I were before I'm now going to go to the advanced tab and here I can unlock it and say I want to manipulate it please. It's just a way of saying yes let me mess around with it. So I'm going to click the padlock. So that's expanded it's now giving me access to all the information as you can see I'm in this data section and if I click more options there's a whole load of data in here, a whole load of information. I'm going to make this easier though, because what I want to do is I want to put some um, code, if you like, a little formula in there to manipulate and connect that drop down box to the data source. So, to do that, I'm now going to go into that drop down this box and I'm going to click it. And you can see when I click on the actual drop down box itself, all the information changes and there's some actions, there's some data. And what I'm looking for is something that says items. Here it is. But I want to put a sort of a, a I want to use the IntelliSense that cleverly will give me all the correct information I need. So to do that, I'm going to click in the items box. Okay. Now what that does is it just displays the word items up here. I call it the property bar because it's a list of properties here. And then to the right of that, you've then got that same value, but I can take that out and delete it and tell it what I want it to point to. So I want the items to come from the subjects data source. And if you do lose sight of what your data source is called, you can just point to the cylinder. You can see the subjects where that's what you're going to type in. And then after that source name, you put in a full stop and then whatever column you want that's going to provide the drop down values. In this case, as I said, it was the title column. So there it is. I'm going to click the title column. Now, now that I've done that, it's got a little bit skew with, easily fixed. The little red cross there, if I click on it, it's saying, oops, hover over it first. It says name isn't valid. This identifier isn't recognized. If I click on that and edit this in the formula bar, it's actually pointing to the wrong thing. So it's pointing to data card value six. What is that? Well, let's go back into that subject card. Okay. There's my subject data card. And if you remember what I said was data card value six is the text box. And it's grabbing the value that I click on, except it's picking up value. Uh, and it's having a bit of a field day. So I'm going to change that word selected dot value to selected dot title so I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to say yes I'm happy with that and then I'm going to test it I want to see if this works now little thing if you click the play button in the top right hand corner and preview the app the first time it don't work that's okay 
just close the preview down. So you go back to that items drop down box on the left hand side. You select all of the data that's in that subject.title and you cut it and you paste it. Just take it out, put it back in again. And almost like magic, it populates. And you know it works because the actual subject will display the first value in the subject list, which in this case is Teams. So if I go in and click Preview, now you shouldn't need to do that more than once. Cut and paste and it fixes the problem. Uh, and it's just kind of a re-establish or a connection to the source. Ideally, I should have put that data uh, in a collection, but I'm not going to go back collections. That would make it a lot more reliable, a lot more better. But this works. It works and it's nice and simple and we can always improve it and get it better later on. But now it's, it's working. It's beautiful. Oh my God, I can now pick subjects from the subject list in a totally different SharePoint site um, and place it into my courses. Now that I'm done, I'm going to save the form I'm then going to publish it so that back at my courses list the users can now interact with this new updated form super duper let's go and have a look and see how that works so back at the courses list I'm going to go to the top here click new and on the right hand side if I go into here there's a subject drop down box and there are all my subjects sitting there. Isn't that just brilliant? And to prove it's live, if I just close it down and go back to the subject list, let's add a new one in there that's not in there. Let's put it in Microsoft Word. Word's not in there at the moment. There we go. Save. So I've got Word at the bottom. I'm not going to borrow about the icon and stuff. Let's go back into courses. Press F5 so we refresh the page. Uh, and then click and create a new icon. Here we go go to the subject list and bang look at that word is at the bottom fantastic uh, yes you are doing it in power apps it takes a little bit longer but all oh, the pros so much outweigh that you know the fact that I can connect to any SharePoint list or library I can even connect to Excel I could pull data from all types of sources which is fantastic and power apps is just an amazing tool and it's just browser based you don't need to download software you don't have to wait for IT to update your software or verify it. It's immediate. You go in there and you can play and it's so convenient. And yeah, okay, you will need to learn a bit about Power Apps and Power Automate. And to not being funny, it's so worth the time spent doing that because that is the way forward. The Power Platform is the way forward. Um, my company, and there are many other sort of sources, but my company, QA.com, we provide some fantastic training on Power Apps, Power Automate, and we're going forward with the, the cloud services. So have a look on our website, QA.com, Power Apps. And if you're not in part of the UK, it doesn't matter. We do online virtual training like, you know, it's, it's such a, a grand thing. And of course, under the COVID lockdown, um, we are going crazy with so much online training at the moment which is why i'm not doing as many videos as i'd like but the the idea of it is we've got so many courses running now because everyone's relying on that sort of online convenience uh from working from home uh get yourself one of the courses we've got a one day power apps essentials uh we've got one day power automate essentials just to get the ball rolling get you working get you started and get you on the right path so it's really worth it so hope you liked that video, hope it was useful to you and as I normally ask, could you please subscribe to my channel because what I can then do is provide you with updates to new videos coming out, new ideas, new tips and tricks. Um, also, if you have any suggestions, any ideas for videos that I can put forward with little how-tos, you can use my social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, add comments and give me some suggestions, anything you would like me to see, uh, anything you'd like to see me build for you uh, i would love to do for you um, stay safe and have fun take care